Good morning, Tehmina Khan is here in TK Maths is fun. In today's video, we will see the concept covered under the heading of graphs in practical situation, which is the part of the syllabus of O-level mathematics. According to the syllabus, you need to have understanding of these concepts, interpretation and use of graph in practical situation, draw graphs from the given data. Now, the example I have taken covered these two aspects, right? Calculate distance traveled in the speed time graph and how to apply the idea of the rate of change and the terms connected with this concept, right? In the speed time and distance time graph. So the question I've taken will cover this aspect. One more thing on my website, if you go, which is given here under the heading of challenging questions, you see I have listed down here all the topics of the syllabus. You click on one and you will get all the videos I have made on it. So it will help you to get a quick recap or revision of the whole syllabus. So let's start with the question, but before that you need to recall few concepts, right? So I will go through them very quickly. It's just a recap or the recall. If velocity time graph is given to you, then if the line is given in this shape, it means there is a constant acceleration. If it is a horizontal line, it means constant velocity. And if it is with negative gradient, you know from the coordinate geometry, the line in this direction gives you a negative gradient or rate of change. It means constant deceleration. So in other words, you remember that in velocity time graph, the gradient gives you the acceleration, right? And second thing, very important thing about the area under the curve in the velocity time graph is that it gives you distance covered during that time period. So if this shape is given to you, this means there is a forward movement and this means there was a back, backward movement. So in case if I draw the line, suppose you have started your journey from here, right? And if you look at this, you are moving onward with acceleration, then you're moving onward forward with constant velocity, then you're moving forward, but you are decreasing your velocity, which means constant deceleration. And then at this time, you take reverse. So this is the meaning of the graph. So area under the curve gives you the distance covered, right? Now, this is another thing. If the curve is not a straight line, then what does it mean? See here. Now look at these two graphs. They're not a straight line, they're curved, right? This is going upward and this is downward. So let's see curve one. So if the acceleration is changing, every time it is not constant or it is not um, changing at a constant rate, it may be changing all the time. So if the acceleration is changing, the gradient of the velocity time graph will be changing. So it will be of this shape, right? It means increasing gradient. And if it is decreasing and it is changing, it's not constant, then it is this shape. So you have to remember these two shapes, right? Now let's see a distance time graph. In the distance time graph, this slant line, which is a positive gradient, is called a steady speed, uniform speed. And this is stationary. The car is stopped, time is passing, right? So this is the meaning in the distance time graph. Now in the distance time graph, if line is not straight, horizontal, vertical or slant, rather it is curved, then what does it mean? If the speed of the object changes, it will be accelerating or decelerating. Now see in this shape, there are four portions given to you to explain to you the meaning of it. This is going upward. This is constant right straight line here and then again curve acting downward and then a straight horizontal line so what is the meaning of these segments a b c and d see here a which is like this and remember it's a distance time graph it means gradient is increasing speed is increasing here gradient is constant it means a speed is constant in this portion The gradient is decreasing 
so speed is decreasing and in this straight portion which is d it means in the distance time graph gradient is zero and the object is at rest so let's say start a question i hope you will remember these concepts the first question is very simple and then we will go to the little difficult or typical question this question all these questions are from past paper so two parts it has you have given the initial velocity the final velocity the object is de uh, decelerating you can see from 20 meter per second it is reaching to 5 meter per second in 25 seconds you have to calculate the retardation so how you will do this Now, do you remember this, what I'm showing it to you? Now, being a maths student, you may say, what is this, right? But if you remember what I'm connecting it to, see here. You remember that acceleration is equals to change in velocity over change in time, right? So, change in velocity means final velocity minus initial velocity divided by time. So this is, you know, that acceleration is change in velocity divided by change in time. So this change in velocity, which happened from 20 meter per second to 5 meter per second in 25 second, if you plug in in this formula, you will get acceleration minus 0.6. Now, remember, if question is saying retardation, it means you will not use negative sign along the magnitude. You just use retardation is 0.6. And if you are using A, acceleration, right, minus 0 0.6, which means it is slowing down. Express 20 meter per second in kilometer per hour. Now, this seems simple, but the students usually make mistake in conversion. You need to know here that in this question, you have to change 20 meter per second into kilometer per hour. Meter into kilometer, you divide by 1000. When you change second into hour, you divide by 3600, right? So, simply 20 meter per second will be what? You will divide 20 by 1000 and per second mean 1 second. So, you'll divide 1 by 3600. So, this will give you kilometer per hour because you have changed meter per second into kilometer per hour. And after solving it, you will get the answer 72 kilometer per hour. So let's see a different type of question. Now here, this is showing you the speed time graph of traveling between two road junction. Three questions are related to this topic, uh, this graph. Number one is calculating the retardation of the car between 48 seconds and 58 seconds. Now you need to know how to read the points here. If you see between zero to 10 or 10 to 20, there are 10 boxes. It means each box is representing one second, right? So, because question is saying between 48 second to 58, 48 second is here and 58 second is this one. So, I have to find out this retardation. And we have seen that in the speed time graph, the gradient gives us the acceleration or retardation because the shape is like this, it's just retardation. So, I will simply apply the gradient formula here at this point and I will get the retardation minus 1.5. Now, please remember with the word retardation, you don't need to write minus like I said earlier, right? Okay, now second part of the question. By drawing a tangent, find out the acceleration of the car at t equals to 8. So, at 8 seconds, you will go and check the point on the curve, draw the tangent there. Then on the tangent, just put two points which you can read easily, select such point which you can read easily and then apply gradient formula and that gradient formula of the tangent will actually gives you the acceleration on the curve at that time at t is equals to 8, right? This is the basic concept of tangent. So, you get here time here. Just a minute, sorry. Okay, so you got acceleration 0 0.92 meter per second square. Let's see the last part of the question. 
This question is saying calculate the distance traveled by the car between t is equals to 15 second and 58 second. Now 15 second is here. I have drawn this line. 58 second is here. So I have covered this whole area. Like I said in the velocity time graph or speed time graph, the area under the curve gives you the distance covered during that time. So to find out this area, you can see there are two shapes, rectangle and triangle. If you are finding out separately each area or overall this shape is a trapezium. So either you apply the formula for the area of trapezium or apply separately and calculate the value which will represent area. I am applying here trapezium formula, right? Which is half into height into sum of parallel sides. We know this side is parallel to this side. So I can read from 40, uh, sorry, 15 to 48, which is 32 I have written here and this side is from 58 to 15 or 15 to 58 is 48. So in the formula you have applied it and you got 600 meter because 600 is the magnitude and this is representing meter because area is representing the distance. So thank you very much for watching this video. Please share with your friends and press subscribe and like button to encourage me. Thank you. Take care.